Take a moment and look at your flock. If you have birds that still haven't hit market weight after six or seven months, if your hens have poor hatch rates, or if you're losing poults for no apparent reason just days after they hatch, stop looking for excuses. It's not the weather, it's not the brand of feed, and it's not bad luck. The one responsible for the success or failure of your entire operation is right there in your pen. We're talking about the foundation, sire. Before we dive in, let's talk about a term that carries immense weight, the elite stud. In the world of high-end livestock, a sire is much more than just a male. Think of a championship bull or a triple crown stallion, animals with extraordinary vigor and power capable of elevating an entire bloodline. In elite poultry, when we talk about the sire factor, we're referring to that top-tier male that doesn't just fertilize eggs. He injects superior quality into every single one. He is the anchor of your flock, the animal tasked with being the best of his generation so that the next one is even more profitable. To understand the importance of the male, we have to think like farmers. Imagine your farm is a field. The hen is the furrow, the fertile ground that receives, protects, and nurtures. You can have the richest soil in the world, well fertilized and watered, but if you plant low-quality seed, your harvest will be stunted and full of losses. The sire is that seed. He carries the genetic blueprint for muscle development, metabolic speed, and the immune strength of your future flock. We aren't talking about a 50-50 split in practical terms, we're talking about impact dominance. Genetically, the male is the architect of your growth rates. While the hen provides stability and maternal instincts, the sire is the one pushing the envelope on what's possible for weight gain and feed conversion. Imagine you have a breeding group with 10 hens. If one of those hens is mediocre, let's say she grows slowly or is prone to illness, the damage is surgical and limited. She might give you 40 or 50 poults a year. That's a mistake that affects barely 10% of your production. You spot her, you cull her, and the problem is gone. But the foundation sire is the father of every single poult born on your farm. If that male is a genetic saboteur, he doesn't just ruin a hatch, he ruins your entire year. He is responsible for 50% of the DNA of hundreds or thousands of birds. This is what we call impact leverage. In terms of investment, the sire is the longest lever you have. A small upgrade in the male's quality produces a massive jump in the quality of the entire population. If the bloodline provided by the male is poor, it doesn't matter if your hens have the best maternal hardware in the world, the system will fail. The most expensive mistake the average breeder makes is falling in love with what they see. They go to a show or a neighbor's farm and say, look at that Tom. He's got a massive snood, perfect feathers, and a majestic strut. He must be a great father. Friends, that is phenotype, and in professional breeding, phenotype can be a professional liar. Phenotype is just physical appearance influenced by the environment. If I take a mediocre bird and give him the best vitamins, premium starter feed, and keep him in a gold-plated cage, he's gonna look spectacular. But his genes are still second class. When you breed him, his offspring won't inherit the vitamins you gave him. They'll inherit his natural inability to grow. What we're looking for is the genotype, that invisible genetic load that only reveals itself when you compare performance data under pressure. A true elite sire is chosen by his track record, not his looks. A turkey that weighs 33 pounds at 8 months might look impressive, but he's a commercial failure if an elite bird hits that same weight in 5 months. Those 3 months of difference are thousands of dollars in feed bags wasted on maintaining an inefficient animal. The elite businessman isn't looking for the prettiest bird, he's looking for the most precocious and the most efficient at converting grain into meat. In this business, beauty doesn't sell by the pound, muscle does. To select a sire that truly upgrades your farm, you must evaluate three critical structures that are highly heritable. If the male isn't superior to the hens in these three areas, you aren't breeding, you're just multiplying mediocrity. 1. The chassis, bone structure and leg health. A turkey is biologically designed to carry a heavy muscle load. His legs are the pillars holding up the building. A bird with crooked toes, a labored gait, or one that spends too much time sitting on his hocks, is a bird with a defective chassis. You must observe the leg conformation. A sire with cow hocks, valgus, or bow legs, varus, will transmit a mechanical weakness that will cause his offspring to collapse under their own weight. This skeletal weakness is passed on with incredible force. A foundation sire must have steel legs, thick, perfectly aligned and with healthy footpads. 2. The payload, keel geometry. The breast is your premium cut, the heart of your profitability. This is where the pros are separated from the amateurs. When evaluating your sire, you must feel the keel bone. A mediocre male has a V-shaped breast, where the bone sticks out and the muscle falls away to the sides. An elite sire has a breast shaped like an inverted U or a heart. It should be so wide that the keel bone is actually recessed between two powerful muscle masses. 
Keel length is also vital. We need a long frame to deposit more meat. Every extra inch of breast width in the father translates into tons of additional meat when multiplied by a thousand pults. 3. The Engine, Precocity and Metabolic Vigor Precocity is the ability to reach sexual maturity and market weight in the shortest time possible. A male that takes too long to start strutting or showing reproductive drive is a male with a slow metabolism. You need sires that are volcanoes of energy by 20 weeks. That vigor translates into offspring with a superior spark of life, pulse that bust out of the shell with strength and find the feeder from minute one. A male with high libido isn't just about fertility. It's a biological indicator of superior hormonal health that will be inherited as stress resistance in his offspring. An elite sire without data is just a big bird. This is where breeders become businessmen. You need to know exactly what that male weighed at 8 weeks, 12 weeks, and 20 weeks. Why? Because the growth curve is hereditary. We need to measure the FCR, feed conversion ratio. If you have two toms that weigh the same today but one reached that weight on 10 pounds less feed, that's your sire. That efficiency is the most valuable genetic trait of the 21st century. Record his fertility rates and the mortality of his offspring. If you don't measure it, you can't improve it. The clipboard or spreadsheet is just as important as the feeder. Data kills the story. Don't let your eye fool you when the numbers are telling you something else. We need to talk about something that gets overlooked. Inbreeding is the fastest lane to bankruptcy. While you can line breed with some success in chickens, turkeys are extremely sensitive to inbreeding depression. When you keep the son of your best bird to breed back to his own mother or sisters just because he looks good, you are signing your farm's death warrant. Inbreeding locks in growth defects and unlocks hidden diseases. You'll see a drastic drop in egg fertility, late-term embryo death, and poults born with crossed beaks or neurological issues. Your foundation sire should always be fresh blood. You need that genetic jolt we call hybrid vigor or heterosis. Hybrid vigor is that extra boost of growth, health, and vitality that occurs when you cross two unrelated lines. It's like the DNA wakes up and runs at full throttle. Don't fall in love with the bird. Fall in love with the performance of his offspring. If you want progress, the sire should come from the outside, preferably from a farm with better records and genetics than your own. Let's talk money. A certified sire from a meat or dual-purpose line might cost you $200. A yard bird at the local swap meet costs you $20. The amateur thinks, I just saved $180. The businessman thinks, what is that saving going to cost me? This is the concept of opportunity cost. That $20 bird will produce 300 offspring that will take two months longer to finish and consume 30% more feed to hit market weight. If you calculate the daily maintenance cost per bird, you'll realize that mediocre genetics are stealing money from you every second that bird has its beak in the feeder. Do the math. 300 birds eating for 60 extra days is 18,000 additional rations that produce zero meat, only maintenance. At current feed prices, you'll spend thousands of dollars just to compensate for the father's poor genetics. The cheap bird ends up being the most ruinous investment of your life. In contrast, the $200 sire pays for himself in the very first batch of poults through feed efficiency alone. In this business, high-quality genetics are always a bargain because they are a one-time investment that pays dividends in every ounce of meat produced. If you want to produce high-performing laying hens, don't look at the male. Look at his mother. This sounds counterintuitive, but the sire is the vehicle that carries the production genes from his maternal line to your future hens. If your goal is to sell poults, you need hens that lay a high volume of fertile eggs. Therefore, you must investigate your sire's pedigree. How many eggs did his mother lay? Was the shell quality strong? How long did she stay in peak production? If the male comes from a hen that was a top-tier layer, he will inject those high-productivity instructions into the DNA of your future females. If he comes from a low-performing line, your hens will be beautiful but unproductive. You'll be feeding beauty queens that don't lay turning your farm into a free hotel for useless birds. Your profitability depends on the number of eggs per hen, and that number is dictated by the father. An elite sire cannot be treated like a backyard bird. He is your farm's most valuable asset and must be treated like a pro athlete. You cannot expect a bird living in crowded, parasitic conditions with a poor diet to express his full genetic potential. The male requires a higher level of nutrition. He needs diets rich in vitamins A, D3, and E mena, plus trace minerals like zinc and selenium, which are fundamental for sperm motility and skeletal health. A sire with mineral deficiencies will produce weak sperm, resulting in clear eggs and disappointing hatch rates. Furthermore, you must manage lighting. Turkeys are extremely sensitive to light cycles. A proper lighting program of at least 14 to 16 hours ensures the male is at his reproductive peak when you need him. But beware, stress is enemy number one. 
A sire stressed by excessive heat, constant fighting or lack of fresh water will lose fertility long before he should. Biosecurity is non-negotiable. If you bring in a new male, he must go through a strict 21-day quarantine. Don't risk your entire year's investment just to get a new sire working a week early. A common mistake is keeping the same sire for 5 or 6 years out of nostalgia. In precision breeding, we evaluate the fertility curve. Generally, a Tom has his best reproductive performance in his first and second years. After that, his weight can become a liability. An overweight male can injure hens during mating or simply become lethargic. As a businessman, you must have a generational replacement plan. Don't wait until the male is infertile to find his replacement. You should always have a successor in training, a younger male with even more advanced genetics. Genetic progress never stops, and every year, primary breeders develop more efficient birds. Your sire today is better than the one from five years ago, but tomorrow's sire must be better than today's. In today's market, the consumer is more demanding. People want quality meat with better texture and flavor. The sire factor influences this too. A genetically selected male produces offspring with better meat distribution and superior carcass quality. When you use elite sires, you guarantee a uniform product. In a professional business, uniformity is king. Whether you're selling birds for Thanksgiving or for gourmet distributors, your customers expect consistency. If some birds are large and others small, you lose commercial credibility. The sire's genetics are what reduce the standard deviation in your final weights, putting a seal of quality on your brand. To be an elite breeder, you have to be cold in your decision-making. Out of a hundred poults, maybe only one or two have the right stuff to be your next foundation sire. Selection pressure means you don't settle for what's available. Even if you bought expensive genetics, you must observe the individual. Genetics is a lottery where we buy more tickets by choosing good parents, but the draw happens at every birth. You have to evaluate temperament, adaptability, and health from day one. Do not be afraid to call. A male that is constantly sick, even if he has the best breast meat in the world, is useless as a sire because he will pass that immune weakness to his offspring, driving up your medication and vaccine costs. We want the total package. Strength, health, temperament, and performance. You have two paths in front of you. You can remain a bird multiplier, someone who just puts males and females together and hopes nature does the magic, accepting mediocre results and slim margins. Or, you can decide today to become an elite producer, a breeder who understands that the sire factor is the most powerful tool you have to transform your financial reality. Shift your business mindset. If you have a limited budget, don't spend it on a large group of average birds. Spend 70% of that budget on the best male possible, even if you can only afford a couple of hens to start. It is far better to have three average hens with an extraordinary sire than to have 10 fine hens with a trash male. The extraordinary male will lift your flock in a single generation. The poor male will sink the finest hens in the world in a single cycle. Genetics is a ladder. You decide if you're going up or down. Success in poultry isn't a matter of luck. It's a matter of smart decision. You decide if you want your farm to be a museum of pretty birds that eat your capital, or a profitable enterprise that generates pride and stability. Do not let a mediocre male sabotage your hard work and your future. Look for excellence, invest in proven sires, and watch as the numbers finally start working in your favor. Quality always enters through the father. Remember this, the male is the architect who designs the success. The hens are the factory that executes it. Without a good blueprint, no building stands the test of time. Before we go, I want to hear from you. This community grows when we share our experiences from the barn. Leave a comment below. Have you ever had a sire that completely changed the luck of your farm, for better or worse? What is the one trait you never compromise on when picking a stud? Let us know your story and where you're watching from. I read all your comments because we're all still learning every day. To your success, fellow breeder. Until next time.